Hi everybody. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to register using your CUNY First account. Um, the login for your CUNY First account should be the same as your Blackboard, so hopefully you all know uh, what that is. Uh, when you log into your CUNY First account, you're going to go, um, you know, find the CUNY First homepage, uh, and you're going to go. It's going to look like this. You're going to put the username in. It's your first name dot last name, the last two digits of your student ID number. Okay, and then you leave the at login.cuny.edu. The password uh, would have to be something that you set. It would have to have at least one capital letter and at least one number. Um, and then once you log in, you will see a screen that has a menu that looks like this. Okay, so. Um, you might have several options in this menu at the um, top left hand side but the one that you're going to want to be concerned with is the student center um, your student center looks like this and it's where you go to get a lot of information about stuff on campus um, you can see your schedule you can see your name your ample ID number make sure your address and phone number and email are all correct Underneath the schedule, you'll see your semester bill, so you'll see what you've paid, what you owe, what financial aid's going to cover. Um, a couple of things that you want to look at. On the right-hand side, um, you'll see a couple of things. You, you'll see the name of your academic advisor. Uh, you'll see if you have any holds. Holds are things that would prevent you from registering from, for classes. Um, some of the most common holds are things like bursar holds, meaning that you owe some money to the college or uh, you might have an advisement hold meaning that you have to speak to a specific advisor before you can register uh, a lot of times the ASAP program will put that on to um, prevent people from registering without talking to an ASAP advisor first uh, you might have a library hold you might have an over overdue library book you might have an admissions hold which means that you never provided your proof of high school graduation um, so yeah, there are a lot of different types of holds. If you have a hold that's listed there, you can click on details and it'll tell you more information about that hold. You might have some holds from prior from other CUNY colleges. You might have applied to like another college like uh, Baruch or uh, Hunter or something and then you decided to come to Kingsboro. And so because you were coming to Kingsboro, you never submitted your immunization records to Baruch. Um, and so they still have a hold saying you need to submit the immunization records. If, if the hold is from another college, it's not going to stop you from registering here at Kingsboro. Okay. Um, you'll also want to check the to-do list there to see if there's anything that you still have to take care of in terms of um, like your uh, SPARC training, which is a domestic violence sexual harassment training that everybody has to do. If there's anything that you're missing for financial aid, you know, all sorts of things like that. Um, you can also ac access your degree works um, through uh, by clicking the degree works online advisement on the right near the bottom. Um, we have another video uh, regarding how to uh, make degree works work. Okay, so um, this is also your student center is also where you're going to get your grades uh, for the, at the end of the semester. Um, now, when you're trying to register for your classes from your student center you're going to click on this little um, thing here that says enroll okay it's uh, in the student center it's to the left of your uh, class schedule you click on that little button that says enroll okay and it should bring you to a screen that looks kind of like this it's going to ask you to select the uh, term that you're trying to register for now Kingsboro is on a slightly different uh, academic calendar than most other colleges. We consider spring and summer to be two parts of the same semester and we consider fall and winter to be two parts of the same semester. So um, this, uh, this is why you might have heard some people say that your summer classes are free or you might already be registered for summer classes or, or winter classes. Um, and uh, it's, it's not that they're free, it's that they're the second part of the semester. So on this screen, if you're trying to register for your spring classes, you would select spring for the year that you're trying to register for. So I'm recording this in the spring 2020 semester. So if you're trying to register for summer classes, 
you would select spring 2020 because s summer is considered to be part two of the spring semester. If you're trying to register for fall classes, you would select fall 2020, obviously. But if you're trying to register for winter classes, you would still select fall 2020 because winter 2021 will be part two of the fall 2020 semester. Okay. Um, so once you select that, it should bring you to your shopping cart. And your shopping cart is where you put classes before you can register for them. Now every class has a four or five digit registration code. And if you know the code, you would type it in the box that I've, I've got circled on the screen here. But if you don't know the code, you'd have to click that search button. Okay? Uh, and if you do that, it will bring you to a screen that looks like this. Okay? And you can search for classes in a multitude of different ways. Uh, I'm going to show you two of the ways that you can search for classes, but there are a few other kinds of things that you can, you can set uh, to limit your searches. Um, so the first way we're going to look is if you know the course that you're trying to register for, like the specific course number. So, for example, if you're taking English 12 now, um, you know that you're going to have to take English 24 next, right? So, when you search for classes, you would set the um, subject to be the subject of the course, so in this case English, um, where it says course number. I always set this to say contains because otherwise Sometimes it doesn't give you the right results if you don't, so I always just set it to say contains. Um, and then the, in the box next to that, you would type the course number. So since we know we need to register for English 24, uh, we just type 24 in that box. Okay. Now, the next thing that you want to make sure that you do is you want to set the session. Okay. Uh, because if you hit search without setting the session, it's going to show you both the spring and the summer classes because again remember we consider spring and summer to be two parts of the same semester okay or it'll show you both fall and winter if you're looking for fall classes okay so to tell it that you're only looking for the fall classes or the spring classes you're going to set the session to be the regular academic session okay uh, regular academic session is for fall or spring and if you want to set it to look for a summer or a winter class, you would set it to be the second session. Okay, second session is for summer or winter. Um, don't worry about any of those eight weeks or th six week sessions or anything like that. It's always either regular academic session or second session uh, for for Kingsborough for the most part. And when you've done that, it will bring you to a screen that looks like this, which will show you all of the classes that are available. So you see um, when I did the search for uh, fall classes for English 24, it, it brought me up 46 sections that still have seats. And uh, the days and times are, are listed. Uh, sometimes it will tell you the room for some of these. They don't, I mean, they don't have rooms just yet. Sometimes it will tell you the instructor. They don't have those assigned just yet either, so it still says staff. The dates of the semester are listed there. Um, you can see that it uh, is a, a fall class because it's from September to 2020 to December 2020. Um, on the right hand side you'll see the mode of instruction. It says instruction mode. Uh, there are a couple different things that you'll see there. So that first class, section 01 there, is a fully online class. Okay, Meaning that that class it meets 100 percent of the time online in, in Blackboard. Okay, um, If you look at section 4 that's a hybrid class, okay? And what that means is that uh, part of the class meets in the classroom and part of it meets online. So it does have an, it's kind of a hybrid between an in-person class and an online class, okay? So if you look at the timing on that section, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 9. If you look at the section above it, which is a totally in the classroom in-person class, it's four days a week from 8 to 9, okay? So this section four here is two days a week in the classroom and then two days online okay so that's the difference between a, a hybrid class and a fully online class there's an online component to a, not a hybrid class but you still do have some time in the classroom okay um, so when you find the section that meets at the time you like okay you'll have a green button over on the right hand side that'll say select class don't push that button because uh, it will um, kind of bypass the next screen and I want you to look at the next screen so that you find out more information about the class, and that you'll see why in just a minute. 
if we want to look at more information about the class, we would click on the section number on the left-hand side, either the class number or the section number. And when you click on that, that will bring you to a course description, okay? And the days and times, the rooms, the instructor, it's all still listed there. Now the enrollment information is what uh, I want you all to look at. That's going to tell you if the class is part of a special program or if it has a prerequisite. A prerequisite is a condition that you have to meet in order to take uh, this class. So for English 24, the prerequisite is English 12. In other words, you have to pass English 12 in order to take English 24. Um, I will say that for most courses like English, psychology, sociology, bio, uh, you know, most uh, courses, if it, it lists the prerequisite, then it'll let you register for that class if you're in that class, uh, the prerequisite now, because it's going to assume you're going to pass it. So for example, if you tried to register for English 24 and you're taking English 12 now, it will assume you're going to pass it and it will let you register for that. It doesn't do that with math. Um, so they want to see the grade in math before you can register for the, for the next class, okay, the next math class. But everything else just about. Um, it also doesn't do it with the remedial classes. So if you're in English 93 right now, you have to wait for your grade in English 93 in order to register for the next English class. Okay. The other thing that it will say under the enrollment information is uh, if the class is part of a special program. Now this particular class is only open to students in the ASAP program. So if you're not in the ASAP program, the computer is not going to let you register for this particular section unless you join the ASAP program. And if you want to do that, you can do that in M233. Um, and I highly recommend it. They give you a lot of good stuff. Um, the class capacity is how many students can register for it. Enrollment total is how many already have. So there's 27 seats left. The course description is there. Sometimes it will tell you the textbook. And when you're ready to select it, you'll have a green button on here that will say select class. But since this is only open to ASAP students and we may not be in the ASAP program, we need to choose a different section okay because otherwise it wouldn't work unless you're in the ASAP program again so to l look back you don't hit the back button on CUNY first it always kind of messes things up what you would do instead is you would click that button on the bottom that says view search results okay and if you do that it'll take us back to this screen the um, list of all of the classes so if we choose a different section here let's say let's look at that section three okay um, and it'll bring us more information so again you click on the button on not the button the um, link on the left the section number and it'll bring us to the screen that tells us more about the class and you see this one this still has the prerequisite for English 12 so you have to pass English 12 to take English 24 but um, this one's not this particular section is not reserved for ASAP only so anybody can go into this section um, if you click the select button it'll bring you to this screen that says are you sure you really want to select this class You click next and then it will appear in your shopping cart and it will look like this I did this screenshot with a psychology class not English but okay oh well when you put a class in your shopping cart you are not registered for it okay uh, it's just basically putting the, it in the uh, the cart to tell the computer that you intend to register for it someday it's like when you go to the supermarket and you get your shopping cart and you put your milk and your eggs and your meat and your cheese and your snacks in the shopping cart you're not done that stuff's not yours until you walk through the checkout lane and and um, and pay for it okay so uh, I mean if you just walk out the store without um, going through the checkout lane they're gonna take all your stuff out of that shopping cart and put it right back on the shelf so putting a class in your shopping cart doesn't reserve a seat in the class okay in the same way you have to finalize the registration so what you do to do that is you click that button that says proceed to step two of three and then it's going to bring you to this screen that says are you sure and you click finish enrolling and when it works it'll give you a green check and it will say success this class has been added to your schedule if it doesn't work it will give you a red X and it will tell you why it didn't work if it uh, you always want to read what it says there if it didn't work because it's like a time conflict with something that you've already registered for then you have to pick a different section but more often than not it's going to be something like a, a prerequisite error okay meaning that it's not reading that you have the uh, prerequisite to get into the, the class uh, this happens a lot with math and even after the grades are posted and so 
If that happens, you have to call the registration help desk, and their number is 718-368-6551. 718-368-6551. You call them, you give them the registration code for the class, you give them your ample ID number, you tell them that you've uh, met the prerequisites, uh, and then you they give you the permission to register for it, and then it should work from there. Okay. Um, so that's how to register for classes and uh, how to search for classes if you know which class you're uh, trying to go for. Okay, But suppose you've met with an academic advisor, or you've gone on your degree works, and you've seen uh, that you need to take a writing intensive course. There are lots of different courses that are writing intensive. Um, or suppose the advisor told you you can take anything in group B, the US experience and its diversity. Okay. Well, there are a lot of classes that satisfy that requirement. There are history classes, there are political science classes, there are literature classes, there are all sorts of different classes that satisfy that particular requirement. And maybe you don't have a specific idea of which one you want to take. So what you would do from the class search, instead of putting in anything in the subject, what you would do is you can open up uh, some of these other opportunities. So if you click if you open up the course attribute, you need to see a writing intensive class. If you click on the um, course attribute, you scroll all the way down to writing intensive, it will uh, only show you the sections of the class that are writing intensive. If you open up the requirement designation, you'll see that all of the flexible core and all of the required core things are listed there as well. And so you can select one of them. So I selected uh, the US experience and when I did it my search I still had it set to writing intensive so it showed me all of the writing intensive sections that uh, of classes that fall into the US experience and its diversity so you see there are three courses and there are three different courses a uh, civil rights course a history of New York and a uh, women in American history and you can click on the section numbers of those to find out more information about them if it doesn't really appeal to you you can click view search results and take it back to see the uh, the other options okay uh, and find out more information about them one last thing I want to talk about is if you have um, some schedule restrictions okay uh, let's say you have to be done with your classes by two o'clock or you have you can't start uh, you get off work at 11 and you can't be to campus until one um, you can get you can set meeting start times and meeting end times. Uh, so it won't show you anything that starts before or after something. It won't show you some, anything that will end after the time that you have to leave. Okay, so you can set that. Um, you'll also notice in this shot that I set the session to be the second session because I wanted to remind you all that the summer and the winter are considered to be the second session. So you want to make sure when you're looking for summer classes uh, you're selecting spring 2020, second session, okay? When you're looking for winter classes, you're selecting fall 2020, second session, okay? So um, that's CUNY First in a nutshell, and um, yeah, hope that was helpful.